Uh, Kirk, let's break this down just bit by bit and start off with uh, the Reddit army that keeps descending on particular names in asset classes across the board. Uh, run me through what you expect perhaps from uh, regulators and legislators in the coming days, or do you think this is just going to kind of start fading away a little bit? Good morning, Yusuf, and thank you for having me. Um, I think this story has a number of episodes yet to it. Um, it certainly shows the power of the crowd. Um, and I think when you look into that crowd, and I think the regulators will look into that crowd, you will find some sophisticated players. Uh, but the biggest story, or what they'll be really, I think, more focused on, is has there been any market manipulation? And also, clearly, uh, looking to protect the, uh, the smaller investor, because I don't think there's going to be any doubt that uh, some people are going to be hurt, and it tends to be the smaller investor. That, that all said, I, I don't think uh, there's fears of contagion. It is interesting what's happening in the silver market today, which had already been up 50% over the past year. But as a rule, these are happening at small parts of the market. And as you touched on earlier, the short interest is uh, at a very low level. And that maybe that's why you're seeing this being accentuated. I mean, what's really striking to me is that anybody can join Reddit and that it's become an umbrella term for a cause, even though the people within it are not vetted, are not checked. And so you could have a lot of professional traders and investors who might be infiltrating a lot of pockets within the Wall Street bets community on Reddit. Uh, Kirk, what's your view then on uh, the stimulus bill? Uh, that's the other sort of big issue that is weighing on the shoulders for markets and investors. Uh, the initial offer is, is far from the $1.9 trillion that had been muted. Uh, would halfway still be enough to, to really support an economy that's reeling from another wave of COVID? Oh, I, I think it will. I mean, we're, we're really still distributing the $900 million, which was just approved at the end of the year. And you can add... And that's close to 5% of GDP. And then you, you can, we think you'll probably see about another trillion. And so that's, that's significant stimulus coming down the line. And, of course, we, we know the Fed's going to remain uh, accommodative. And, uh, and we are optimistic that the vaccine rollout will, by the, certainly by the end of the second quarter, uh, along with what herd, herd immunity has already developed, will result in the opening up of the economy. And, uh, and you'll get, no doubt, you'll get a surge as, as that happens. So, uh, and that's really what markets are pricing in and why they're leaning into risk. You know, all the lights seem to be green at the moment. So when you add that up, the GameStop saga not being a cause for concern in terms of contagion and systemic risk, uh, the stimulus program that you're saying will be forthcoming and, and, and effective. Where do, you, where do you go into equity specifically in the U.S. story? Because arguably we've seen valuations get driven up quite a bit and the rotation play has kind of begin, has begun to fizzle out a bit. Well, well you are right. Valuations are at all-time highs on many, many metrics. And so it does, we, we do believe it has to be an active game. We, in many ways, you know, we see passive as a new, new aggressive in this type of environment. But when, when you look to where we're, we're leaning, we continue to believe there's good value in secular growth stories. Uh, so companies with very strong fundamentals, strong balance sheets, and we continue to find that in, in the mega, mega kind of cap area and technology is a good example. Um, but we do believe that you're going to get this continued cyclical participation, and, and we're finding that in, in the small cap. So overweight the, the mega cap, structural growth stories, and, uh, and small cap. Uh, and what about allocations to commodities and, and fixed income in sort of a wider portfolio? We, we still are a very big believer in a diversified portfolio, and fixed income pro does provide that very valuable hedge. Uh, within that, though, uh, we continue to have a bias towards the kind of volatility spread assets. 
so that's credit. Uh, and so investment grade, high yield, and preferred securities. And we also, in, in the alternative space, uh, like real assets. So we, we continue to like real, real estate. Within real estate, though, we'd be looking for some of the more kind of niche sectors. So an example of that would be, say, data centers.